what's up guys welcome back to my channel and it's finally the next faction of skylords reborn card tier list for pve and for this video we'll be touching on the frost cards so yes i'll be very excited to read the frost cards some of the cards over here they do not have the most updated um, stats because of the patch changes for skylords reborn these are the cards that mainly came from the original EA game and of course I've added some of the new cards like the Code of Protection that is recently released alright let's dive straight into this video and for our first card we have the Emmy Ritual alright let's take a look at, at Emmy Ritual and the first one we have is the Frost Affinity followed by the Nature Affinity so let's take a look 3 Frost Ops 150 power to reduce damage for walls op and power wells you would rather spend your power on units or even towers so this would be an f both of the option next would be architects call another card that i won't really use because it doesn't make sense at all you could just summon the construction hut so I w i'm not very sure what circumstance you use it so i'll put it as an f tier for both of them as well next up we have the area issue and this is very interesting because recently we got a buff for the battleship where they are able to move at a swift speed if they have the ice shield so the area issue really helps a lot in boosting the power for frost decks so in the past i think it would be probably like a d tier or so but now I would read it as an A tier. It's a really good card. Next, we have the Armored Tower. And Armored Tower is a card that is used more defensively than in an offensive card because the offense safe damage is really low. Let me just show you offense damage 110 damage every 2 seconds. Not very impressive for a tier 3 card at all. But the Gift of Ice. It's very useful 50% less damage for any friendly entities around the armored tower i would say this is not entirely useless but it isn't exactly very useful as well i will put it as the d tier card next up is avatar frost and it's a very very good card it's like a now that there's a code of protection it's like casting code of protection every 15 seconds or so i think so i would rate this as an a tier card this side is battleship battleship is super super good with area ice shield now and it's not like a very slow moving ship so if used well i will rate it as an s tier card for frost cannon tower excellent tier 2 defense card although it could only attack ground units so it's a b tier card for me something that i would put as a really uh, reliable defense um, tower card next up is cold snap and cold snap is definitely a very 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 important card if you are using pure frost decks and even though you don't you really use frost that as long as you have a frost up you might also consider putting cold snap inside although the downside of freezing units is that they do only 50 percent um, damage to any frozen units but nonetheless very good card put it as an a tier for cold snap construction hut is a vital card if you want to build any buildings and increased building speed decreases power cost for buildings as well so i'll put it as an s tier it's really a vital card for any colored decks as long as you have a frost orb next up is construct i really enjoy this card not because of its power but i really enjoy this card because of how different it is and i think it is one of the few cards of the only card that knocks back ground extra large units so very very impressed with this card but the downside of course is it's slow walk really really slow so i'll put it as a b tier but it's a card that is very very fun to use cordage for both affinities i wouldn't classify them as any things significant so they are quite a good card and i wouldn't deny that they are good card but i wouldn't say that they are fantastic as well so cordridge to me it's a tier c for both of them 
Defenders, not exactly fantastic. Let's take a deeper look for Defenders. 70 power um, for small unit. Pretty standard card. Put it as a D tier. Defense Tower. I will rate Defense Tower as a really good tier 1 Frost uh, Tower because damage is decent, health is decent as well. So I'll put it as a B tier card. Dreadnought. It's a highly, highly situational card. As for example, the Mutating Frenzy, um, the Death Wish, where it reduces a lot of its health every few seconds. I think Dreadnought would be very helpful in tanking some of this damage. But again, it's a very situational card, so I'll put it as B tier. Frontier Keep. No reason to use this card. It's way too expensive. It's not worth the waiting time, and it only applies to buildings. Uh, around, I think it's a very small radius around buildings that freezes uh, enemy units. Not very helpful. Next up, we have Frostbite. The Fire Infinity, uh, I think, have the unit walk at the slow pace and uh, fight at a slower pace, but the Shadow one has a normal walk speed and 25% uh, more damage for enemy units. So, obviously, the Shadow Infinity ones is. A lot more useful in my opinion put it as a b tier while the fire one i, I don't really see much need for it as f tier frost crystal i have never used it the damage is poor the ability isn't worth using at all you have cold snap so i'll put it as an f tier frost mage extremely good tier one card because of its uh, knockback for, for small units which is very very important for tier 1 because mostly you will encounter small units as a tier 1 so I think first mage is probably like an A tier damage decent as well Frost Shard recently there's, there's been a buff on it uh, so I will basically search up Frost Shard basically the, there's an increase in total damage dealt yeah not only does it freeze hostile units but now it freezes buildings as well and the spell is able to ignore the huge damage reduction of frozen targets. This would mean that Frost Shard is a lot more useful than before. And I'll put it as B tier. Frost Sorcerers. Um, very situational card. Yes, very situational, but I don't really use it in PvE, so I'll put it as a D tier. Glaciation, very situational card, but it's a lot more useful for defensive missions like the Guns of Liar. So, put it as a C tier for both of them. Glacier Shell, not a fantasy card, but some usefulness, so it's a D tier. A Glyph of Frost, it's a pretty okay card. Cold Snap does it better, C tier. Gravity Surge is a card that I honestly don't really use much in. PvE. I think it's more relevant in PvP games. D tier for PvE. Home Soil. Fantastic card. It's really vital for Frost. You need to combine it, uh, combo it with the Ice Barrier. I'll put it as A tier for Home Soil. And Ice Age, another card that has been buffed because of the code protection. And for the Nature Affinity one, basically, it's like a regrowth. And the Frost of Frenity is basically like a avatar of Frost uh, Ice Shield. Uh, but of course, the unit has to have an existing Ice Shield in order for this Ice Age to apply for both of them. So if I were to think the Code of Protection, what I would want is the effect of Regrowth rather than avatar of Frost. Basically, usually you want to use cast regrowth because of the overtime heal rather than the instant heal. Because let's say if you have a, a lot of your units are three quarter of health and you cast an instant heal, you might not leverage on most of the heal. So if that were the case, I would put nature, the nature affinity ice age as an A tier. But the first one is a C tier. Ice barrier A tier. Ice Garden is a PvP card, it's F tier for PvE. Ice Shield Tower, just use the normal defense tower, don't use Ice Shield Tower. It's a bit, the damage is not as good. Ice Tornado, situation card, but C tier, I guess. Ice Fang Raptor, F tier. 
I don't want to explain that. It's not really a good card at all. Imperials. Imperials is... Honestly, I use Imperials quite a bit because of its resilience. It can tank quite a bit of damage. So honestly, I'll put it as a B tier. Ironclad. It's a very fun card to use. It can be quite useful if you know how to use it. So I'll put it as a C tier for both of them. Juice Tank. F tier because if you know how to play the map well, you don't need to drag the game for a long time. Cobra Engineer is... It's really a good car. It's a B tier for if you have a lot of towers, a lot of buildings to repair. It's a really good car. Cobo Inc. F tier. Not very helpful at all. Cobo Laboratory. F tier as well. Cobo Trick, on the other hand, I would rate it as a B tier. Instant heal and it's quite a reliable spell as well. Okay, Light Blade. Um, I'll put both as a D tier. They are usually used for their taunts and tankiness, but other than that, not very helpful. Lyrish Knight, more of a PvP card. Oh, Maelstrom, it can be pretty useful, especially for like RPV, but PV itself, I'll put it as a C tier. Master Archers, I think that the tier level has dropped after its buff. It's no longer tanky, even though its damage has increased, but because there's no not much use for frost. The tankiness really help of the 600 health, but now it has been dropped to 480, so it's a bit more paperish. So I'll put it as a C tier now. Mountain Rowdy is an F tier straight away. Mountaineer on the other hand, because of its siege, passive ice shield regeneration, really good damage and knockback. It's actually an S tier for me. I really love the Mountaineer. Northern Keep. A lot better than the Ice Shield Tower, but if you want to go for pure defense, you should use Defense Tower. Although Northern Key has a ability that entrenches your unit so that your unit doesn't take in any damage if it's at upgrade 3. It's not entirely useless. Put it as like a C tier for Northern Key, both of them. North Guards, just a soldier without any special ability, so F tier. Northland Drake has got a, a really good buff as if you can see here in the past the damage isn't impressive it's like 2370-2435 but they have buffed their health and damage by quite a bit so now rate Northland Drake as an A tier their attack, their, both their attack and health has increased tremendously it's a very reliable card now. Next would be the North Star. And for North Star... Basically the Nature Affinity North Star has gifted slowdown which 25 meter radius around the North Star hostile units are only able to walk at... Uh, to move at walk speed. For the Frost one, the Blast Hibernation, hostile units remain frozen for 25% longer. I don't find it useful because you have to spend 40 power to build this. It's way too situational. So I'll put it as an F tier. Okay, next up we have the Felix. And again, it's not really a useful card because you have Mountaineer, you have other tier 2 cards that you could use. And I think Imperial still does better. Okay, next up we have Retreating Circle, very situational card. However, I I don't think it's completely useless, so it's a D tier. Next up we have the Code of Protection. The Code of Protection over here. And for the Shadow Infinity one, basically it casts an Ice Shield that absorbs up to 2500 damage. For the Frost one, it's 1800 damage. Basically the Shadow... Oh, the Shadow one is 2500 damage, but every second it depletes by 50 health of the ice shield but for the first affinity is 1800 but it doesn't deplete the ice shield doesn't deplete so it really depends on what you want but i think the shadow one is better in my opinion i'll put it as a b tier the first one i'll put it as a c tier because it's not the full ice shield next up is the shatter eyes very situational card but it's very useful i put it as a C tier. Shield building. It's very situational. You might not even need it, but I've used it and it can be very useful. This time, the Shrine of Martha's. 
uh, let's take a look at the buff it, it has been buffed quite a bit of uh, quite a few times i still don't think that it's very useful it's f tier silver wind lancer is a card that i really enjoy using because it is very tanky it has swift it's many many really great attributes about this um, and it's it costs really low power just 80 power so i'll put it as a b tier sky of commander not very useful card um because it's also tier 4 and you don't really need a reduction in damage however for sky of sage you really want the damage buff for your world breaker guns so i'll put it as an a tier sky of templar is also a very good card that heals your building but not as useful as the sky of sage so i'll put it as a b tier storm singer more of a pvp card in my opinion so i'll put it as an f for both of them stronghold it's not a fantastic card the damage isn't great it just looks and sounds cool it's a f tier it costs way too much 150 power tempers is f tier also the damage is way too bad it doesn't knock back it's a tier 4 and doesn't really do much timeless one is f tier as well i've honestly never used that card to tremor very good beginner card but it can be replaced easily so it's a d tier war eagles on the other hand they are very very useful even in pvp very good air unit that attacks ground units war of the north uh, is very useful in absorbing damage b tier warden seizure is a situational card but quite useful if you're not to use it well it's a c tier white rangers f tier winter witch f tier not gonna say anything about it winter tie situational say as a d tier but very close to f tier world breaker gun is an s tier hands down s tier is the best best tower in the entire skylos reborn and it's a must have if you want to advance to greater heights in in this game so i think this is it for the frost pve cards ranking list and let's take a short look again s tier very few cards and our f tier we have a ton of cards so let me know in the comments what you think and if you have any alternatives as well to how you would rate these cards and i'll see you guys again next time